Join Astro, our friendly robot explorer, on his latest adventure to the moon. In this journey, Astro will not only explore the lunar surface, but also share real scientific facts about the moon, making it an exciting and educational experience for young listeners. Preparing for the journey, blast off to the moon. Astro, our enthusiastic robot explorer, is gearing up for his exciting journey to the moon. As he prepares for blastoff, Astro shares some fascinating facts with his young friends on Earth. Astro explains, To leave Earth's gravity, a rocket needs to travel at a speed of about 25,000 miles per hour. That's over 33 times faster than a speeding bullet train. He smiles as the children's eyes widen in amazement. As the rocket ascends, Astro says, We start to feel zero gravity when we're about 62 miles above Earth. That's like stacking 10 Mount Everests on top of each other. He floats around playfully to demonstrate. Astro continues, Once we're out of Earth's atmosphere, we travel at an average speed of 2,300 miles per hour to reach the moon. That's almost three times faster than the fastest aircraft ever made by humans. He adds, Traveling at this speed, it takes about three days to get close to the moon's orbit. Imagine a three-day-long road trip, but through space. Orbiting the moon, unraveling lunar mysteries. As Astro's spacecraft approaches the moon, he gears up to enter lunar orbit. This part of the journey is filled with excitement and a wealth of scientific wonders. Astro, now close to the moon, begins to explain... We're entering the moon's orbit. Unlike on Earth, you wouldn't feel strong winds or air whooshing past because the moon has no atmosphere. It's a silent and serene glide into orbit. While the moon does rotate, it spins much slower than Earth. It takes about 27 days to complete one rotation, which is the same time it takes to orbit Earth. That's why we always see the same side of the moon from Earth. Astro elaborates as the spacecraft circles the moon. As they fly over the lunar surface, Astro points out, the moon has a north and south pole, just like Earth. But unlike Earth, the moon doesn't have a significant magnetic field. It's a mystery that scientists are still trying to solve. Astro continues, some areas of the moon have tiny spots of magnetism, but there's no big magnetic field going from the north to south pole like on Earth. This means a compass wouldn't work here. Astro then explains why orbiting the moon is crucial before landing. Circling the moon lets us study the surface from above. We can find the safest place to land without big rocks or steep cliffs. It's like scouting the best spot to land your kite in a park. If you were standing on the moon, you'd see the sun rise and set only once every Earth month. Imagine having a month-long day and then a month-long night. From here, Earth looks about four times larger than the moon does to someone on Earth. It's a beautiful and unique sight. The Lunar Landing, Descending to the Moon's Surface Astro's adventure takes a thrilling turn as he prepares for the most critical phase of the mission— landing on the moon. This part of the journey is packed with excitement and crucial lunar landing details. As the spacecraft gets ready for the descent, Astro explains, we're now separating the descent stage from the ascent stage. Think of it like shedding a heavy backpack before climbing a hill. This makes our spacecraft lighter and ready for a safe landing. Astro continues, during the descent, we rely on our onboard computers and guidance systems. The descent is slow and controlled because even a small mistake could mean a crash landing. It's like gently placing an egg on a pillow without cracking it. Astro, while observing the lunar surface, says, Choosing the right landing spot is crucial. We look for a flat area with no large rocks or craters. It's similar to finding a smooth parking spot for your bike where it won't fall over. As we get closer to the moon, the spacecraft enters a hover phase. We hover just above the surface, adjusting our position. It's like a bird floating in the air before gently landing on a tree branch. 
Astro excitedly announces. We've landed! The spacecraft's legs have touched the lunar surface, and we're ready to explore. The moon is a world of extremes, and I can't wait to show you its wonders. The moon's surface is covered with a fine, powdery dust called regolith. Astronauts found that it sticks to everything and can be quite a problem. It's like the dust bunnies under your bed, but much finer and everywhere. The moon's gravity is only one-sixth of Earth's, so we don't need as much fuel to slow down for landing. Imagine jumping down from a small step instead of a high ladder. When we land, there's no sound of engines roaring or dust blowing because the moon has no atmosphere. The landing is eerily quiet, like being in a soundproof room. Exploration and discovery on the lunar surface. After a successful landing, Astro is ready to step out onto the moon. This part of the adventure is filled with exploration and hands-on learning about the moon's unique environment. Astro excitedly steps out of the spacecraft onto the lunar surface. Here I am, on the moon, he exclaims. Each step I take is light and bouncy because of the low gravity. It's like walking on a giant trampoline. As Astro explores, he points out the moon's fascinating features. Look at these large, round craters and tall, rugged mountains. The craters were formed by asteroids and comets hitting the moon over billions of years. It's like the dents and bumps you get on a playground ball. Astro decides to test the lunar gravity. He jumps high and picks up a heavy rock effortlessly. With the moon's gravity being so much weaker than Earth's, I can jump higher and lift things that would be too heavy on Earth. It's like suddenly having superhero strength. Astro observes, There's no atmosphere here, so there's no wind or weather. That means no erosion like on Earth. These landscapes have remained unchanged for millions of years, like a giant, untouched sandbox. Astro leaves footprints and tracks from his rover. These marks could last for thousands of years, as there's no wind or rain to wash them away. It's like leaving a permanent signature in wet cement. Suddenly, Astro feels a slight tremble. That's a moonquake. Unlike earthquakes, moonquakes can last much longer, sometimes several minutes. They happen due to the gravitational pull from Earth, and sometimes due to the cooling and contracting of the moon's interior. It's like the moon is shivering. The horizon here looks much closer than on Earth because the moon is smaller. It's like being in a large open field where the edges seem nearer. With no atmosphere, there's no sound transmission. If we were to talk, we'd need radios to hear each other, just like astronauts use in space. As Astro concludes his exploration for the day, he sets up his equipment for the night, looking forward to uncovering more secrets of the moon. The moon may seem silent and still, but it's full of stories and mysteries. Let's see what else we can discover. Unveiling Lunar Secrets, Composition and Environment Astro's lunar adventure continues as he delves into the composition and environmental aspects of the moon. This part of the story focuses on the moon's makeup, resources, and the possibilities of life existing in this stark landscape. Astro starts his analysis with moon rocks. These rocks tell the story of the moon. They're made up of elements like oxygen, silicon, magnesium, iron, calcium, and aluminum. Many of these elements are also found on Earth. It's like finding ingredients in your kitchen that are also in your neighbor's kitchen. Astro explains, Scientists believe the moon was formed when a Mars-sized body collided with Earth, and the debris from this impact eventually formed the moon. It's like when you mix different colors of clay and then pull a piece away to form a new shape. Astro moves on to the topic of water. Recent missions have found evidence of water ice, especially at the poles in permanently shadowed regions. It's not like Earth's rivers or oceans, but more like frost on a cold morning. While there aren't active volcanoes now, the moon once had volcanic activity. We can see large, dark plains called Maria, which were formed by ancient lava flows. It's like the dried-up puddles you see after a rainy day. 
Astro examines the lunar soil. The moon has resources that could be useful for future missions. There's helium-3, which is rare on Earth but abundant here, potentially useful for clean energy. It's like finding a rare treasure in your backyard. The moon has no atmosphere to protect it from the sun's radiation. This means the surface is constantly bombarded by solar radiation, making it a harsh environment. It's like being outside on a sunny day without any sunscreen, but much more intense. Astro reflects on the possibility of life. Currently, no plants or animals can survive here due to extreme temperatures, lack of water, and high radiation. But in the future, who knows? With human ingenuity, we might find ways to make the moon more habitable. It's like imagining a garden growing in a desert. The lunar surface is also hit by tiny meteorites. Since there's no atmosphere to burn them up, they land on the surface, creating tiny craters. Surviving a lunar night, which lasts about 14 Earth days and gets extremely cold, is a challenge. It's like enduring the longest, coldest night you can imagine. Despite these challenges, the moon has a quiet, stark beauty. The stars and Earth look incredibly bright and clear from here, with no atmosphere to blur them. The moon might seem barren at first glance, but it's full of mysteries and possibilities. Our exploration here is just the beginning. Reflection and Return, Understanding the Moon's Influence As Astro's mission on the moon draws to a close, he takes time to reflect on the significance of the moon to Earth and prepares for his journey back home. This part of the story emphasizes the moon's impact on Earth and the future of lunar exploration. Astro stands on the moon, gazing at the distant Earth. From here, Earth looks like a beautiful blue marble, it's a reminder of how interconnected the moon and earth are. He points out the earth rise, a sight of earth appearing over the lunar horizon. Astro explains, The moon has a strong effect on earth. Its gravitational pull causes the ocean tides. Without the moon, the tides would be much smaller, which would affect marine life and coastal ecosystems. It's like having a dance partner who helps you move in rhythm. While the moon seems distant, it plays a crucial role in Earth's stability. It helps to stabilize our planet's axis, preventing dramatic climate shifts. Without the moon, Earth might wobble more, leading to extreme weather. It's like a steadying hand that keeps you balanced on a bike. Astro reflects on future missions. Humans are planning to return to the moon, establishing lunar bases for research and using it as a stepping stone for Mars missions. The moon could be a crucial outpost for exploring deeper into space. It's like setting up a camp on a mountain trail before reaching the peak. As Astro prepares to leave the moon, he shares his final thoughts. This mission has taught us so much about the moon, but there's still more to explore and discover. Every visit here brings new knowledge and gets us closer to understanding our place in the universe. It's like completing a puzzle, one piece at a time. When the Earth comes between the sun and the moon, it casts a shadow on the moon, causing a lunar eclipse. From Earth, we see the moon turn a reddish color known as a blood moon. Each year, the moon drifts about 1.5 inches away from Earth. This slow movement is due to tidal forces. It's a slow but constant change in our cosmic dance. Astro boards his spacecraft and begins the journey back to Earth. As I head back, I carry with me memories and data that will help us understand our celestial neighbor better. Until next time, Moon.